When did you find out about Pama Piano? So it was during the first lockdown. Uh, you know, we all had a lot of time on our hands. Yeah, I was working yeah. in the kitchen. Yeah. I was listening to hella music. And then that's about the time. I mean, I'm not sure over here what time it started popping up. But uh, that was about... 2017, I think. Yeah, yeah. I think yeah. it was a bit sooner. But in the UK, it was just starting to get... There was a few DJs playing a few songs. Yeah. And I think... The one that really did it for me was John Villegati, <laughs> if you remember that one. Yeah, 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 yeah. And from there, all of our music sounded like dust. <laughs> true, true. Yeah. yeah. Hey. Shit. Yeah. So I've been doing all my shit. I'm just really trying to blow. Race against time, but I'm really riding slow You be slow with me down, that's the thing, my bro Look at my homies, who the real I sound no. yeah, Even the closest looking like the furthest from the kitchen looking for a thing Yeah, no, no, I'm happy to look at you I just didn't know if you wanted us to talk <laughs> Yeah, yeah <laughs> We're yeah. on a chat show Yeah, okay Um <sighs> <laughs> Yeah. You, do you usually do that before, like you yeah, DJ. yeah, okay. before I'm DJing even. Okay. Oh, you breathe in through your nose and out through your mouth. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. That's how you get the best in here. Dope, <laughs> dope, dope, dope. Okay. What's going on, my niggas? It's your boy B on another episode of the Elusive Podcast, baby. Yo, Emma, what's good? What's, what's good? going on, Emma? Uh, nice to meet you. How are you doing? Nice to meet you too. <laughs> thank you for having me on here, bro. I'm happy to be here, man. Yo, thank you for coming, man. All the way from the UK. All the way from London. <laughs> Yo, damn. I'm very far away from home right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. What What brought you here to SA? Ah, uh, in a, in a word, uh, piano. Piano. <laughs> I'm a piano. Yeah, because I'm, oh, I'm, oh, I'm a piano, I thought, I but like, playing yeah. the piano. <laughs> you know what? People often confuse it, when, yeah. especially in the UK, where yeah. it's not so popular. I tell them, I play, I'm a piano. Mm. They think I'm talking about the instrument. It gets yeah. very confusing. <laughs> but yeah, no, basically, I came to the UK. I came to SA from the UK because um, I basically wanted to, I'm, I'm a piano DJ and I just wanted to learn more about the culture yeah, and yeah, about yeah. I'm a piano and you can, you can only really do so much of that in London. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you get me. True, true, true. Mm -hmm. Well, first of all, uh, please introduce yourself. Who are you, Emma? So yeah, I'm Emma the DJ. I'm from London. I love I'm a piano. I'm passionate about it. I'm a, I'm a DJ. I've been DJing for about two years now. Yeah. Um, yeah. What else do you want to know, basically? <laughs> okay, so back to the Ama Piano. So, mm -hmm. when did you find out about Ama Piano? So, it was during the first lockdown. Uh, you know, we all had a lot of time on our hands. Yeah, I was working yeah. in the kitchen. Yeah. I was listening to hella music. And then, that's about the time, I mean, I'm not sure over here what time it started popping up. But uh, that was about... 2017, I think. Yeah, yeah, I think yeah. it was a bit sooner, but... In the UK, it was just starting to get, there was a few DJs playing a few songs. Yeah. And I think the one that really did it for me was John Villegati, <laughs> <laughs> if you remember that yeah, one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and from there, all of our music sounded like dust. <laughs> true, true. Yeah. Actually, that was my first, like, I'm a piano so favorite. I'm no way, song, really. Because I also, like, I'm a hip-hop fan, you know. Mm -hmm. I really like hip-hop. Like, hip-hop is... I even make hip-hop music. Do but you? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. But when I heard, like, John Vulicate, even the beat... The it's a drop. It's yeah, a drop. Yeah, like, that was... <laughs> and, <laughs> hey, hey. And the guy's voice, like, yeah. it catches your attention. Tosh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But, yeah, okay. So, yeah, you said you were working in the kitchen. Yeah, well... That's actually the funny story of how I got into DJing. Um, yeah. So basically, I was working as a chef. Mm. Um, I love cooking. Cooking is a, like, I'm a DJ, but another one of my big passions is cooking. Oh, for real? <laughs> yeah. And so I was working as a chef. I was working for, like, three years. Mm. And I was in the kitchen a lot. And especially during lockdown, I was in the kitchen by myself, mm. listening mm. to the radio, listening to DJs. And the realization just hit me during lockdown 
I want to be a DJ. Damn. Damn. <laughs> I want to be a DJ. So I got some decks, yeah. like just some little, a little controller. And then after my kitchen shifts, yeah. you know, I would, um, I would come home, I'd practice. And it got to the point where I was like, let me give this everything I've got. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so I quit my job. Um, yeah, I, I quit my job and yeah, I, I think everything that's happened between that time that I took that leap of faith and now has just proved to me that I've done the right thing. Cause I do, I do kind of follow my heart with these situations. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I don't like to think too hard about mm, things. Mm. When something feels right to me, I just do it. Do it, it yeah. Yeah. So you said you quit. Did, before you quit, did you like learn how to DJ or? So, yeah, I got to, I mean, I was still a beginner. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I got to a stage where I thought, okay, cool, you know, I'm getting a hang of this. Mm. I, I wasn't really club ready at the time. Yeah. But, you know, I built up my music library a bit. And then from there, at the time, because this was, uh, I think it was during, it was after the first lockdown and I think we were back in lockdown and I was staying mm. with my parents at the time. Mm. And I just kind of shut myself in my room for like two months and yeah. I just practiced and practiced. yeah. And then times I was, I think I was doing a mixture of genres. Like I was doing Afro beats. I was doing, I'm a piano. I was even doing dance hall. Oh, <laughs> Don't tell anyone that. <laughs> <laughs> what, so before I'm a piano, what was your favorite like uh, music Ooh, genre? Probably, probably, well, uh, there was two parts, probably house and Afro beats, yeah. but mainly Afro beats. Yeah. Anything, real. yeah, anything really like there, there's something for me about African music that just kind of speaks to me a lot more yeah. than other music. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's a very spiritual thing. So no Adele or... <laughs> <laughs> Shout out Adele. <laughs> yeah, Adele, I love you, but um, <laughs> yeah. it's not really my cup of tea, that yeah. kind of like pop music or anything like that. I mean, I like, I guess the closest thing to Adele for me would be R&B. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. I do like r and B. I I like a lot of different styles of music, but when it comes to music for me, like, I feel like if it's not I'm a piano, then I, c I can't hold my interest for that long. Yeah, yeah. So all of the work that I like to do, you know, I've done some bits within the music industry, mm. but all the work that... I like to do it has to be to do with I'm a piano otherwise I just can't yeah, yeah, <laughs> I, yeah. I lose interest <laughs> okay so um you quit your job now mm -hmm. you in your you locked in yourself <laughs> locked in, in your room, room for two months mm -hmm. so after that what do you do do you start like go to going to clubs and asking like to DJ and what do you do so um I moved back to London because yeah. like, like I said, at the time I was staying with my parents, they were outside of London. Oh, I moved back okay. to London and then we go into another lockdown. <laughs> oh. And so basically I'm in, I'm in my flat and yeah. I, I remember during lockdown, the door was always open mm -hmm. and I would literally just be practicing DJing and people would come in and out. Yeah. Um, it, would, it was just like a constant party in my flat. And, you know, we, I lived on an estate and I would take my sound system and my decks outside and just like DJ for the block. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like not all the time people were listening, but a few times we would have block parties. And mm. I think that was just my opportunity because the clubs weren't even open at this point. And yeah. I, I just come out of being a chef. So I wasn't in that. I think there was a bit of an underground scene going on during lockdown, but mm. I was not tapped into any of that. So I was just kind of doing my own thing. You said this was in London. This was in London, yeah. I'm back in London now. <laughs> Weren't the cops, like, heavy during lockdown there in uh, London? Because London is, like, you know... Uh... Mm -hmm. I mean, that kind of. <laughs> yeah. Kind of. Well, I think at this point, we were still in lockdown. Like, all the clubs and stuff were shut, but you could go to the shops and stuff. It wasn't oh, like... It, was, it, was... it wasn't like when we were isolating in our flat, so... It wasn't the first lockdown. It, was the, it wasn't, no. The first lockdown was when I was working as a oh, chef. Oh, okay, yeah. But this, yeah. Was, this was when, I think... Uh, it's, all, it's all bringing back memories for me. It feels, yeah. it feels weird, doesn't it? It's like, <laughs> it's like it never happened, and then you think, oh... That was a thing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, basically, it was it was around the time when, so anything like non-essential, mm. I think clubs are essential, but hey, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, was shut. And so all the clubs were closed, but like people could go about their lives a little bit. Mm, so yeah. they, I, I didn't really have any issues with that sort of thing. Oh. So long as, you know, like I think if it had got to a certain level, 
Yeah, yeah. Maybe, but it was just on my block. <laughs> yeah. So people had access to alcohol and stuff during that time. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Like from the shops. From the or, shops, yeah. Oh, but yeah, you, as you mentioned, it's the second lockdown. Okay, it, mm -hmm. it wasn't as uh, tight as the first lockdown. Yeah, because I'm. I mean, I'm sure things were very different for you over here. Yeah, because the first lockdown, obviously, like everything was shut down, and people like you'd buy like a bottle of maybe mm -hmm. uh, Hennessy. A bottle of Hennessy is like. 400 right but you'd buy it for like double the price during mm -hmm. lockdown like really yeah but oh, wow. not from the shops from like illegal sellers you know so alcohol was banned everything was banned really yeah oh wow <laughs> how did you no uh, not yeah. everything like mm -hmm. uh, there were uh, the shops mm -hmm. were open obviously mm -hmm. but you like watch TV. Uh, smoking and um mm -hmm. alcohol. drinking yeah that's wild to me because I feel like in England a lot of people we were just drinking <laughs> to, to get through the boredom. Yeah. So yeah. so to to me that's kind of wild the yeah. fact that you guys weren't allowed alcohol. I don't know. Shout out to you for surviving that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm I'm shocked. Mm -hmm. But like people like were like spending that money because like. Mm -hmm. South Africans really love alcohol. I'm sure you've noticed. That. I have. Listen, <laughs> since I've come here, I've had to become a professional. <laughs> Like oh, even today, it's like roll out of bed and start again. You yeah, know? yeah. I think I'm. I think I'm doing pretty well though for a UK person. Yeah, I'm trying my yeah, hardest. Yeah, yeah. My my key is not to mix, mix different drinks. Mm, yeah, to drink yeah. If you, if 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 you mix different drinks, you definitely mm -hmm. will pass out. Yeah, <laughs> and. You don't want to do that as a DJ. Oh, hell no. <laughs> and as from someone who's not even from here, like, you don't want to do Absolutely that. not. And I feel like when I'm DJing, I don't I don't like to DJ drunk anyway because I feel like I'm doing a job. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> and you do it sober? Yeah, most, well, sometimes, like, I might have one drink while I'm DJing, but mm -hmm. I won't, I'll never let it get to the stage where I'll, I'll get drunk and then yeah, I DJ. Yeah. <laughs> you take shots, maybe. Too. Hell no, no. Listen, <laughs> anyone who knows me know Emma the DJ does not do shots. <laughs> yeah. Oh. I, I got strong. I got peer pressured into doing one a few days ago and I think that was my first one in about four years. Damn. And I lived to regret it. <laughs> Why? I went from being tipsy, nice, you know, on a good vibe, to being drunk. Drunk, drunk. So you, you know? don't like the drunk you like It doesn't get drunk. me on a good level doing shots. <laughs> yeah. 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 I'm a problem when I do shots. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I'll be spilling my drinks. I'll be knocking into people like uh, white girl wasted. Oh, damn. <laughs> I get that. I get that. Okay, so, yeah, you said you were doing the block parties. Mm -hmm. So, during the block parties, were you DJing like I'm a piano? Yes. Oh, damn. So, people so, didn't know it though, <sighs> Well, they did because of me. Yeah. You <laughs> so I remember them. I did, um, I threw, I called it, I called it a carnival. Because <laughs> yeah. it was around, I think it was around the time we have Notting Hill Carnival. Mm. Was it? I can't remember. I might be making this up, but obviously all of that was cancelled. So I thought, let me throw, you know, at summer, let me do a nice block party. Yeah. Like, you know, people can bring down food and everything. And I had, I think I put up a South African flag. And I oh. started off with a bit of dance hall because I think there was mostly Caribbeans on the block but then the rest of it was just all I'm a piano mm, and they loved it <laughs> yeah yeah no yeah. they did well they had to they had no choice yeah, yeah. <laughs> but that was your first time like DJing for like a group of people um well I think regarding groups of people like groups of people would come into my flat and then I think my first like gig gig like yeah. proper gig was a work party at, at my work because mm. I was working in a nursery at the time and yeah, that, that just went really well. And then because of that work party and the block parties that I've done, people started asking me, yo, can you come and DJ for my birthday party? Oh. And I was charging, well, I was charging like really low fees. Yeah, so yeah. people were people were booking me. And I think I just built my platform up that way. Because mm, mm. that's, I can't remember, were the clubs open at this point? I'm not sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but my first... I think my first bar gig was, I actually still have that residency now. I just like to shout out my people at The Alchemist oh, shout out to <laughs> in the UK. Um, and we were actually talking about The Alchemist, the book. We were talking about The Alchemist, <laughs> the book. Yeah. And now this is at Alchemist, the bar. Oh, so yeah. let me put you on, anyone who's listening, if you're ever in London, yeah, yeah. it's a chain of bars that we have in the UK. Okay. The cocktails are wild. Okay. So basically it's like they're like science 
experiments in cocktails so they like have they'll mix this with that and there's a big explosion and stuff yeah. it's very theatrical yeah. but they're really nice they're actually really banging cocktails it's not style over substance yeah, yeah and the vibe of the venue is just nice and I've kind of so I got that residency shortly after I started getting all of these gigs and I just kept it up ever since because I just really enjoy being there like yeah. I feel like the people there are like my family at this point shout out, shout out to Alchemist yeah <laughs> They got for you guys. <laughs> okay, okay. So you put, you DJing Ama Piano mm -hmm. and people are start, starting to love it. So who was like your influence? Like mm -hmm. a, a, a female DJ maybe? Like is it like... I have, I have one actually. I do oh, have one. Um, so I remember because, you know, I was still... I mean, I was into Ama Piano, but then I remember seeing... It was Durban Go Go's Balcony Mix. So, um, I can't remember which exact one it was, but it came out quite like a couple of years ago now. Yeah, yeah. And that's kind of one of the things that really, like, obviously I love the music, but one of the things that drew me into the scene was the fact that there was strong female representation. Yeah, yeah. And there's, there seems to be just this, like, within the piano community, this acceptance that doesn't always exist in other genres of yeah. dance music, True. which are, like, heavily male-dominated mm, or mm. maybe genres of, like, music that are very straight, you know? Like, yeah. there just seems to be, like, anything goes, everyone is welcome kind of attitude. Yeah. And that's one of the things that I really liked about it. I think that's why, like, Ama Piano is so successful because of that, actually, because mm -hmm. of the way there are kind of no barriers to entry, mm -hmm. you know, and everybody loves each other, they help each other, and, you know, mm -hmm. it, that's why it grows and it, keep, it keeps on growing. To and this it's, point. it's fun, you know, like, yeah. it's happy. Mm. It doesn't take itself too seriously, yeah, yeah. you know? Yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> uh, things like, genres like techno... Yeah. Like I like like it's a good it has its place in history but I just feel like you go to a techno club this is in the UK and it's yeah. very serious there's yeah. a very serious vibe in there. Yeah. And I feel like that just doesn't match my personality. Mm, true. <laughs> oh, I, I don't know why I'm saying true cuz I don't really know it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this well, is our first time meeting. <laughs> cuz I thought you when I looked at your videos and your profile on Insta I thought like you're very serious. I'm like, okay. I'm serious about piano. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm I'm serious about everything else. Yeah. <laughs> I'm serious about cooking, maybe, as well. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah, you know, like, I I, I take my, like, the things that I'm passionate about, I do take them very seriously. Like, if I'm doing something, mm. I don't I don't like to half-ass it. Mm. Do you know what I mean? I'm not just sleepwalking through life. Like, I'm really trying to give this my all. Yeah. Especially, like, being here, trying to learn about the culture and build up my career. Like, I'm... You know, it means it really does mean a lot to me. Mm, mm. But with regards to the not seriousness, like it's good to have fun as well. You need to have that balance. The balance yeah, yeah. yeah. Did your parents like teach you that, like how to be serious, and or do you learn it from them? Or, are they like that? Are they serious? <laughs> so actually, I I feel like I do. One of the things I feel like I have is a strong work ethic, and I definitely get that from my mum. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I didn't always have that strong work ethic. Like I really struggled at school and college. Mm. Um, but you know, as I feel like as you get older, like the values that, that your parents are kind of pushing on you yeah, from growing yeah. up young, they start to like really sink in. And I feel mm. like, um, yeah, my mum, uh, she's so supportive of me. <laughs> oh. She's so supportive of me, and um, just having that backing as well kind of helps yeah. me too. Yeah. Yeah, nah, shout out, shout out Sue, shout out my mum. Shout out Sue. <laughs> and my dad. <laughs> yeah, I can't leave out my dad. <laughs> Sue and Hugh. <laughs> Big up the man then. <laughs> shout out. So your real name is Emma? Emma, yeah, that's my real name. And oh. I kept it as my DJ name because yeah. uh, people ask me, some, like somebody the other day asked me, why did you call yourself Emma the DJ? And I said, well, because my name's Emma and I'm a <laughs> DJ. <laughs> but um, like, I feel... I feel quite strongly attached to my name. I yeah, feel like yeah. it suits me. Like, I feel like if if somebody called me by anything else, unless it's like M or whatever, yeah, somebody yeah. was calling me by anything else, it wouldn't make sense to me. So I thought, let me not call myself something like DJ Logical or something. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> you know, yes. like, let me keep my name. Yeah, Because I think, I think names kind of have a spiritual weight to they them. They do, you know? they do. And it's strong. I think, like, 
it's a good representation of you, mm -hmm. I think. Yeah. I respect it. Like, I can take you serious. Like, mm -hmm. Emma the DJ, okay, yeah. that sticks. And know. it rolls off the tongue. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's, it's yeah. sweet. It's, yeah. you know. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, your decision to come here, where, like, what was <laughs> happening? Uh, I feel like that this has been in the works for a very long time. This is something I've wanted to do for... Well, I've wanted to come to Africa, like, in general, mm -hmm. for years. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Years and years. And... I feel like with South Africa, it was just about waiting for the right moment because I am studying at uni. Yeah. And, you know, I just feel like I don't really have a logical explanation for it because I just usually operate on vibes. Mm, mm, mm. <laughs> and I just felt like this summer, the universe was telling me that it needed to be this summer for me yeah. to go to South Africa. You know, I have the summer free because uh, I'm a student. Yeah, yeah. And, um, you know, I saved up my money. Okay. And so I just came. It was kind of on a whim. I literally came without a plan. <laughs> oh. And, you know, I knew people for, here from online, but I didn't really I didn't really have a solid direction. Mm. But since I've come here, you know, things have just clicked into place. Yeah, yeah. And I feel like that's, like we were saying earlier, that's just how I like to go through life. Yeah, yeah. What's, what's your greatest experience so far here? Oh, it's been so many. Yeah. <laughs> Let me think. I have to say it's, it's my greatest, but also my most nervous experience. Mm. So shortly after arriving here, um, uh, I found out, I think um, they mentioned that there was an event going on. This was the Africa Summit at Zone 6. Okay. I don't know if you heard about that one. Yeah. yeah. Um, and they, they mentioned it was happening. And I hit up the promoter and he was like, yeah, yeah, come through, bring your memory stick. And I kind of, part of me was like, yeah, I'm going to come through and I'm going to show up. But I didn't think any, like part of me didn't believe that I was actually going to get the chance to, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And it wasn't until the moment when the stage manager like pointed at me and was like, I was like, <laughs> oh, sh am I allowed to swear? You, you can. Um, I was like, oh, shit. <laughs> I was like, oh, shit. <laughs> this, you know, this just got real. Yeah. And I hadn't really, because this was literally on the day, I hadn't really got the chance to prepare anything. Yeah. So I was like, I was on the stage. The crowd was really huge. And I thought, I'd, I think I'd been here for about maybe a week, less than a week at mm. this point. And I was like, in my brain, I was like, here I am in South Africa <laughs> in with this uh, massive, massive stage, crowd. Yeah. massive crowd. Yeah. Uh, I haven't really had a chance to prepare the set, but, you know, I just, I made it work. Yeah. I couldn't hear myself from my headphones because it, it was so loud. Yeah. I know yeah. that doesn't sound like it makes sense, but it was so loud that I couldn't even hear myself properly. But I was just like, right, just go, go with the flow, you know? And I was so nervous. I felt like I was going to throw up through the whole thing. Yo. But I got through it. It wasn't my best set. I got through it and the feedback I got was nice, but... That that whole night was just like to be in the room with, because these people in the UK they're not they're not accessible like that. They're not you know you don't just see them hanging around at the club. You know yeah, these are like yeah. my superstars. You know yeah, and just yeah. seeing all these people. I'm DJing on the stage and then MFR Soul come on and I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> I, I thought is this a dream? Um. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Unpause. <laughs> uh, so who's your, who's your favorite like artist like I'm a piano or DJ or producer? Who's your favorite? My favorite. Mm. So my all time favorite. If I had to pick one, it would have to be Mr. Jazik for me. For real? Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. Every, um, I don't know. Every album of his. I feel like there's no skits. Yeah, you <laughs> can me. play the whole thing. Yeah, yeah and then um, I just really enjoy because he's he's down in the UK quite often. Oh, okay. And I just really um, every time he plays a set, it really touches my spirit. And I think um, let me let me think of some of my top songs by him. I really love. Um, do you remember Picture Junk Park? That song. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. That was one of the songs that, like, obviously, like at this point, because mm. we were talking about John Villegati and how that was my first, you know, yeah. one that made me go, oh wow, you know. Yeah. <laughs> but it, I think it was Picture Junk Park, which actually like really made me fall in love, you mm. know. Mm. That album, uh, Party with the English, I think that that really holds a special place in my heart, mm. and mm. for that reason, like, I have to, I have to name Mr. Jazzy as my number one. Dope, dope. <laughs> 
And I have to shout out Josiah as well, because I really oh, love him as well. for real? Yeah. Because I think they, they came out together. I think mm-hmm. they were like a, a duo. No? Yeah. But now Jez, Jezik is like, you know. Mm-hmm. And yeah, no, they're, they're not a duo that. anymore. But yeah. I, I don't know if you're listening, Mr. Jazik, I'd like to see that come back for one more album. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that would be dope because I really love the Jazzy Disciples stuff as well. Have you checked out his podcast? I haven't, you know, I haven't. Do you know what? Yeah, it's funny. <laughs> I don't like to admit this on here, but I don't really watch a lot of podcasts. Oh, yeah. Okay. yeah maybe I should get into them because I'm a very yeah. much, when I'm like around my house, I will listen to music. Yeah, yeah. And when I'm kind of just chilling, I'll, I'll, I'll mix, you know, that's yeah. kind of what I spend a lot of my time doing. So I'm not really much of a watcher, mm. if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, it's something... I've been meaning to get into. Yeah. <laughs> just but, like reading. <laughs> oh, you haven't read a lot. Um, I, just, I really struggle with books, actually. Like, mm. I mean, uh, when it comes to nonfiction, I'm fine. But, like, um, I, it's, it's, one of my, it's one of my goals. It, <laughs> I haven't set a time limit on this goal or anything, but I want to get better at reading. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm. But it's, it's not a hassle. You don't have to. Mm-hmm. But... It, yeah. I think it's like a self improvement thing. I feel like yeah, yeah. um sometimes like if you're not reading books like you can end up kind of consuming mm. basically junk food content like scrolling through your phone and that. And yeah. I feel like it's just about for me, my my want to actually read books is about putting my kind of attention in the right places yeah, in a way that's yeah. gonna actually kind of develop me rather than numb my brain for the next hour, you know? True, true. Well, Maybe I can suggest a book for you. Yeah, uh, please. Because I'm into like self-help books, like not mm-hmm. like fiction or any other like self self improvement books. Mm-hmm. Um, the 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 first book I really enjoyed, and it's really simple, and you know, it's quick, like it's very short. Mm-hmm. Uh, is the Seven Spiritual Laws of Success. The Seven Spiritual Laws of Success. Yeah, by Deepak Chopra. Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah. If you text me the name of it, I'm going to read it. Uh, <laughs> and then uh, hopefully next time I'm back in South Africa, yeah. we could do another podcast and yeah. you could see if I've actually followed through. Most there. Uh, but you said uh, it's short. Yeah, it's very short. It's <laughs> that very helps. Because like, it's very direct. It mm-hmm. tells you, okay, uh, it tells you what the book's about and then it, it, t- it goes straight into the laws. The mm-hmm. first law of success, second law of success and what you need to do you mm-hmm. know, to achieve it, you know. Very simple. It sounds like the, what's the one, Laws of Power? The 13 Laws of Power? The 42? 48. 48, that's it. Oh, yeah. you've read that one? I have not read that yeah, one. No. Yeah, yeah. It's on the list, though. I'm, I also haven't, but it's also on the list. Mm-hmm. Okay, um, so we skipped so many stages, but yeah, you get to South Africa and mm-hmm. you, uh, you don't know where to go, so... Well, um, it wasn't quite like that because... Mm. Um, Basically, like just before I left, because um, obviously, like I talked to a bunch of people on Instagram, yeah, yeah. and there's, there's this one guy, uh, Kabza, and he says, Oh, I'm a talent manager. Yeah, yeah, this yeah. side. And I was like, Oh, that's cool. I'm going to be in South Africa. Oh. And, you know, like it's this thing that I've been talking about going with vibes. Yeah. And it yeah, was just, yeah. you know, it was just like, this is a person I'm going to be with. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, and then we've, yeah. he, he's been helping me ever since and we've been doing things together and he's been, you know, supporting me since I got here. But that was just kind of like, we almost stumbled into each other. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so in SA, which is your favourite restaurant so far? You haven't been to a restaurant? I haven't been to, well, I've been to one restaurant. Yeah, yeah. I have only been to one restaurant, um, and that is Nando's, oh, which is actually yeah. also my favourite restaurant in the UK. Oh, okay. is it the same or different? <laughs> it's actually very different here. I was yeah. really surprised. Um, is the food better or, or like not quite as good as the UK? I can't even say, because I've actually been thinking about this since I've been. Yeah. I can't say whether or not the food is better than the UK or worse than the UK because oh, it's, it's just very different. Oh, it's different. It's different. Yeah. And but it's not different in a way like this is better, that is better. It's yeah. it's different in a way that I can't compare. Yeah. It's like um what's the expression? Like swings and roundabouts. Yeah. You know? yeah, yeah. <laughs> but um yeah. 
So what's the main differences? I guess one thing that I will say is the Nando's chips in the UK are better. Okay. Sorry, okay. South Africa. But the because <laughs> the, I'm a vegan, yeah. yeah, um, yeah. So I ordered the vegan chicken. And I actually thought, like, I've never had this happen to me before. Mm. Um, I actually ate it and I thought, oh, my God, they've given me real chicken. Yeah. And so I asked, I literally, the chef was there, and I said, excuse me, I, I think you might have given me uh, chicken by mistake. Yeah. She was like, no, that's the vegan chicken. And I was so shocked because it tastes, mm. like I've since becoming a vegan, I've never tasted anything so similar to chicken. Yeah. <laughs> so you, was it like real chicken though? No. It, was vegan <laughs> it wasn't, chicken. it was vegan chicken. Damn. Yeah. Um, so that was, that was a tick for the South African Nando's. Shut up. And the sides are really, they're very different from the UK, but they were really nice. Yeah. Why, why are you vegan? Why am I vegan? Um, that's a really good question. I have to go back a long, a long way in my past to think about that one. Yeah. But yeah, I basically, I've been, I started off vegetarian, but this was about maybe six to eight years ago. So like mm. a really long time. I was, mm. I was not even an adult at that point. And like I used to be, I used to be the biggest meat eater. <laughs> yeah, I love meat. I still love the idea of it, but um, I think um, it was just like a really, really sudden change of heart. Like I, it's hard for me to even explain. Mm. Mm. <laughs> um, and I thought like it just didn't sit right with my spirit anymore. Yeah, and I think I came downstairs and I was like, "Mum, I'm not going to eat meat anymore." And she was like, "Yeah, right." <laughs> <laughs> so she gave me some beans. Mm. Beans on toast, which is an English dish. Yeah. <laughs> uh, baked beans on bread <laughs> for dinner. For dinner? Yeah. Damn. Yeah. Yeah, you should try it. So make some toast. Yeah, yeah. And heat up a tin of baked beans, like the same kind you would use for shakalaka. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then just put it on the toast with butter. Okay. Yeah. It's a, it's a British cuisine. Yeah. It's a delicacy over our side. <laughs> <laughs> That's what? British cooking. What dishes did, did, did you enjoy here, like, apart from, like, the restaurant? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, I have actually eaten a lot of SA food while I've been here. So mm. um, I'm trying to think if I've had anything that I've never tried before. So the first day I got here, I tried uh, quarters. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, the, <laughs> it slapped. Yeah. <laughs> it slapped. Um, I really enjoyed it. Yeah. And um, I tried, what what's that mango stuff at? Acha. Yeah, acha, acha. Acha, that was yeah. it, yeah. And Did you put it in the quarter? Yeah, they put it in the quarter. Yeah. But I was like, I was really shocked because there was like, because of the mango, there was like the wooden bits in it. Oh, yeah. Do you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And I was like, oh, that really confused me. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> so I think somebody said that's just what acha is like. Yeah, but you have to spit that out. Yeah. yeah. But um, yeah, so that was a little bit like I'm still warming up to, to that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I guess it's like having bones in your food, isn't it? Yeah, you just have you to just take have it to, out. Yeah, yeah, like fish. So yeah. that's something I'm still kind of learning. Um, mm. Yesterday I had a braai. Mm. That was really nice. Oh. Um, so I really like, so I, I eat this with my friends in the UK as well. We like uh, pap and yeah, yeah. chakalaka and stuff. But oh, for real? I don't, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, like, because I've got a lot of SA friends in the UK. Um, so I have tried it before. Mm. But um, yesterday was my first uh, proper braai. Yeah. In yeah, South yeah. Africa. Okay. Where? <laughs> um, it was actually in Pretoria. Oh, okay. Yeah. We just, okay. uh, we did it before we went to the club. Yeah. <laughs> Dope. And it Dope. was, it was really nice. Um, what, I'm trying to think what other new food that I've tried. Um, Khodu, have you tried that? What's that? It's um, tribe. Tripe. Yeah. So uh, tripe, that's meat, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, um, so I don't really eat... Oh, you, you mentioned, sorry. Yeah. But braai is also but, meat, though. But I had, um, I bought some uh, vegan, vegan bovos. Oh, okay, yeah. okay. <laughs> For the braai, so I could join in as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Okay. But yeah, so that was that was really nice. Damn, but if if you don't eat meat, then there's not a lot of stuff that you can try or what what can Oh there is. Listen, it's a good time to be alive if you're a vegan. Yeah. 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 A, I feel like today is a golden age of veganism. Like there's so many options. Well, I'm talking about like SA food mm -hmm. in terms of SA. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Although I I really love your sides. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, that's one thing. My biggest discovery since I come here is Samp. Because I've never oh, tried it before in yeah, the UK. Yeah, I've never yeah. had it. Yeah. Um, but I really I'm really enjoying Samp. This is I've been I've been trying to I've been learning to make it at home. I've got a 
I've got a packet of it and it's just, you know, uh, I really love it. Yeah. <laughs> so like anything like sides, like chakalaka, I can eat cabbage, pap, yeah. um, and samp. Yeah, nah, it all snaps. Yeah, I can, even if you don't have the meat, you can still have a proper meal. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Shout out to that. Um, apart from, excuse me, apart from like MFR souls, mm-hmm. who else did you meet? Like, Okay, uh, I'm a piano artist. So yeah. I met Sino. Mm. Um, Sino Msala. Sino, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The vocalist. Um, yeah. God, I'm, I met quite a lot. So I saw Semi T at the club the other day. That was amazing because I'm a really big fan of his music. Oh, um, um, I met, because I, I know this guy from the UK, I met uh, Jaro Superstar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I saw him because we've seen each other in the UK a lot. And then yesterday, because I thought they were in Europe. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and like, we were, I was in the club and somebody tapped me on the shoulder and I looked around and it's it's uh, Jaro. And I'm like, oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> it was so nice to see him. Yeah. Um, and also yesterday I linked up with, uh, we've been following each other on Instagram for a long time. Mm. Um Sizway nineteen. I don't know if you heard of him. He's a he's a quantum sounds artist. Okay. He's uh, from Pretoria, okay. and I've just been following him and his journey for a long time now. And I think he is such a dope artist. Dope. And so yesterday, because I've been trying to link up with him since I got here, and we finally linked up. Dope. And dope. then uh, after my set, I I span a couple of his songs, and he you know he jumped up on the stage. It was <laughs> like, it was a vibe, man. You had to be there. Damn, <laughs> damn. But yeah. you had it on camera, didn't you? Yeah, I did. I've yeah. Actually, just posted a reel. Actually, speaking of that, mm-hmm. I saw one of your videos where you are DJing and you have this transition, and then this girl starts bowing down to you, and then everyone starts bowing down. <laughs> they're like, <laughs> "Oh man, that was that was probably my favorite set since I've got here. That was at Blue Room Hatfield. Oh, okay. Um, okay. I was so nervous before mm. before doing that show because mm. ah, um. <laughs> Basically, I think there was a mix-up with my set or something, yeah. and they were like, because they, t- they told me to play like Skidja, yeah, commercial, yeah, yeah. and my piano. Yeah. And then when I got there, they were like, yo, you need to play, play private school. And, oh. you know, like I kind of like in my head, I'd prepared the Skidja yeah, set. Yeah. So, and, you know, the club was popping at this point, so I was feeling really nervous. Mm, and yeah. I think even my team was feeling nervous for yeah, me. Yeah. Even though, like, I love playing private school and everything, it just kind of like threw me off. Yeah. But once I got in there, uh, did I, I, I just felt the vibe, you know, mm, like yeah. I'm like this, I'll get nervous before, but then once I'm in the space, like the... The club was great. The DJ who was on before me, I wish I could remember his name, but I don't. Yeah. I never got his details. But he was he was playing songs that I really liked and it just got me into the flow. So I started DJ in private school and then people, you know, people were coming up to the decks. And then um uh, I think was it the organizer who came up to me and said, Right, yeah, you can play Skija now. And I was like, oh, okay, cool. <laughs> 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 and so I started like uh Turning, turning the gear up. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And um, people, people were coming to the stage, and people were really enjoying it. And I just felt so chuffed. Yeah. It's like, um, yeah. And there was this that that one girl yeah. who was bowing to me. She she says we're getting married. She says <laughs> she says we're getting married. Oh, yeah. you and her. Yeah, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> um, so watch out for the wedding. But. Um, <laughs> Yeah, um, and just people people were all coming up to the stage. They were just showing me love, and I just it was a really nice moment for me because, you know, it was it was quite a risk for me coming to this country. I didn't even know how I would be received, because mm-hmm. um, you know I'm I'm from the UK. I'm white. Um, you know, yeah. and you know people. I, I just felt so welcomed and like yeah, appreciated, yeah, yeah. and it was just like it it was a good moment. Shout it was a good moment. Them. Yeah, shout out Blue Room Hatfield. Thank you for having me that shout night. Out Blue. Uh, so speaking of the girl saying you're gonna get married, are you <laughs> part of like the LGBTQ? Yeah, I'm. Um, yeah, no, oh. I'm gay. <laughs> okay, okay. I'm gay. Go. Represent. <laughs> Represent. Yeah, and that's so, yeah. Go on. So your uh, your pronouns? What do you? My pronouns. Yeah, she. <laughs> oh, it's she, just she. Usually. Okay. 
Okay. But I get called, I get called sir and he a lot sometimes because I feel like people see me and I sometimes dress in a way that could be quite ambiguous. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and people, people are sometimes not sure, so they'll call me sir or whatever. And I really don't mind. Like it's not, it's no oh, holler. Do you know okay, what I mean? Yeah, but yeah. like I'm, I'm definitely like I feel in my spirit that I'm a girl. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> But you cool as yo, you cool F, eh, bro. Like, oh, do you think I, so? <laughs> when I saw like your post, I'm like, oh, she's like, you always like look so calm and stuff. <laughs> or maybe it's the shades. <laughs> probably, probably. Because you always like, yeah, yeah. I got yeah, the this. shades, they're a permanent fixture. Yeah, yeah. Legend has it that I sleep in them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Some say that they're fused to my face. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> ah, shout out to you though. Mm-hmm. Um any South African terms that you learned? Okay, yeah, so quite a lot, actually. So I'm mm. trying to learn Zulu. <laughs> mm. um, but the first one I noticed when I came down, people kept saying shap shap to me. Yeah. And I, I said, what does, what does shap shap mean? Yeah. Okay, yeah, so I've started saying that now. Yeah. Uh, what other? Oh, why Nikolali Makai? Oh, Agafuni yeah. Malali Makai. <laughs> <laughs> And I learned a new one yesterday, but oh, <laughs> I can't remember what it was. <laughs> what What does that mean? So it was Lali one. Makai. It was one that was like. Um, no, the whining alarm. Lali Lali, um, why aren't you at home asleep? Oh, yeah. I don't want to be at home asleep. Sarah, <laughs> <laughs> Sarah. What What else is there? I'm sure there's other ones that I've learned. People are. People are teaching me. People, I like how people are, are wanting to teach me words and yeah. be impatient with me because there's, uh, there's me going around like with my. I'm literally talking like a toddler. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, a market, uh, kusaza. I'm going around saying all these phrases and people are like, like but people are actually helping me yeah, as well. You yeah. know, I mean, you got to start somewhere at the end of the day. But you're actually good because, like, I know a lot of. Uh, people who are not black who live in South Africa, but they don't mm. know as much as you know of the language. I swear. Yeah, they can't even... Do, so, so do you guys know Afrikaans as well, would you say? Yeah, ek viet the piki, though. So that's interesting to me. So you kind of... you. So when you were together, like Afrikaans people mm. and black people, you just speak uh, English to each other yeah, most of yeah, the time. Yeah, okay, so I see. But like a, a lot of black people know Afrikaans because it was taught in our schools, mm-hmm. especially our parents, because they were forced to learn in Afrikaans, mm-hmm. like back in the apartheid regime. Yeah. Yeah. So they know Afrikaans. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but us, like... But it's, it's a shame to me because I think, um, like, I mean, I know there's more languages than just Zulu, but yeah, yeah. I think the the languages here are so, to me, they're so beautiful and expressive, mm-hmm. you know, like, when I listen to Ama Piano music, that's one of the draws for me, like, when I when I first started listening to it, like, even though I, I couldn't understand the lyrics, I could really feel them. Yeah, yeah. Like, to me, the language is so, <laughs> I really like it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so and that's why I want to learn it, you know? Mm-hmm. And another... Because, like, I'm a piano now, like, in Pretoria, they speak, like, Sotho or Tswana, you know? Mm-hmm. So, with that, they, they, they rap in Tswana or Sotho. Mm-hmm. And those big, those songs are also very big, like, vocalistic and, you know, vocalistic, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, his songs are also very good and he raps in, like, Tswana. So, Does he really? Yeah, yeah. that's Tswana. See, see, for me, I'm, I'm still learning, like... I, I feel like I, I've had a tendency to think, oh, Zulu, yeah, <laughs> across yeah. the board, you know, but now I'm realising as I've been here, there's so many different languages mm. and dialects and mm. stuff. Yeah. And uh, it's like, oh God, I've got a lot to learn. But I feel like for me, Zulu is a starting point because I feel like when it comes to like resources that are helping me to learn the language, mm. there's just more available for Zulu. Yeah, I think everyone... Most people know Zulu. It's like mm-hmm. English. Like everyone knows English, right? Yeah. So Zulu is is like close to English. Mm-hmm. It's like English, and then maybe Afrikaans, and then Zulu. Mm-hmm. You know. So it's like a general one that everyone knows. Yeah, yeah. No, I yeah, hear that. I hear yeah. that. So I think yeah, for me that's where I'm starting. Yeah. Maybe maybe if I come back in a year's time, I will be a bit better. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Do Do you make music? 
Um, so I haven't, it, while I've been in the UK, I haven't really dipped my toes into that at all because mm, mm. I'm more of a business person than a musician, yeah. even though I consider being DJ a form of being a musician. But mm. since coming here, I've really been trying to throw myself in and learn what I can. Yeah, yeah, I've yeah. been working with this amazing producer from Pretoria called Black Man Nane. Okay. Um, okay. Go and check him out. His, listen, his beats are too dope. And okay. We're cooking something at the moment. We're cooking something at the moment. He's he's teaching me, you know, I'm learning oh. a lot. I feel like it's it's really good for me to learn at the source, you know, because yeah, yeah, yeah. uh, Piano from Pretoria has like, it has an oomph, like there's some excellent I'm a piano producers in the UK, but I feel like there's a lot of people also who are kind of trying to imitate the sound and... It's not coming out. It, like, I feel like for me, it's like, you have to come to the source to see yeah. where the oomph comes from, you yeah. know, where the seasoning it's is. It's like also with uh, Afro beats, like mm -hmm. a lot of people try to do it, like your Chris Browns and stuff. But like, oh, what, when... like Afro piano, like a shaki. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, I feel like that's one thing. Like the the way that Nigerians have incorporated Amma Piano to me, I feel like I really like the way that they've made it their own. Mm, you know, mm. they've put their own kind of like, like people like Ashake mm. have put their own stamp on it. People like yeah. Loje and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. Um, and they made like, they made uh, quite a unique sound. Um, and I do like that. And I feel, I feel like with the UK, we've got a, we love our piano in the UK. We've actually got like a strong scene, mm -hmm. which is just growing and growing. And I feel like we're, we're finding our sound as well as a kind of area. Yeah. 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 My brother's also actually living in the UK and he's a DJ too. Really? What's so his name? Like, he's Q the Satellite. Q the Satellite? Yeah, but he's, he's, he only like started DJing again now recently because... What, like, the words, does he play piano or hip hop? Uh, he plays both. He mm -hmm. he originally plays like uh, hip hop, mm -hmm. but like he also like uh, tries to accommodate the piano scene mm -hmm. too because it's also huge and the it's growing in the UK. Oh yeah, for sure, yeah, for sure. Yeah. yeah, it's getting stronger and there's so many. There's so much talent in the UK. There's so many talented artists. Yeah, and um, you know, I, since I've come here, I've even heard some some songs from people back home, like mm. people like Mick Solis, people like Rosie Gold, mm. DJ Kwamzi, you know, I've I've heard their songs spun in the clubs and I've been like, wow, you know, like we, we've made it over here. Yeah. Um, and I've been trying to, with in my sets, I like to incorporate, you know, some of back home as well. Because mm. mm. there, there is a lot of good songs out there. Yeah. Actually, the only UK term I know is Mm -hmm. uh, we're going clubbing. We're going clubbing in it. <laughs> ah! <laughs> we're going clubbing. In very it. good, very good. <laughs> See, ever since I've got here, uh, pe people love saying "in it, in it, in in it, it. to me," <laughs> and it's true. We do say "in it," but I never really thought about it. In yeah, it. <laughs> <laughs> but you haven't said it once. I was waiting for it. Like, you were waiting it, for it. In it, <laughs> I think um, somebody somebody put like one of my uh, one of my team put up a flyer on Instagram the other day yeah. on his story, and he put the caption like, uh, "Let's smash it, lads!" In it. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and I just couldn't help but laugh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Are you into sports? Um, uh, no, not really. Yeah. No, not really. Like, I mean, I know people love their, yeah. what well, you guys call it, soccer over here. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. they love their soccer over here. Yeah. And people ask me a lot about the football teams back home. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Are you a football fan? Yeah, I'm a huge football fan. Mm -hmm. And the crazy thing is that since my brother moved there, like, he lives right Next to the Emirates Stadium, and mm -hmm. that's that's our favorite team. Oh, Arsenal, really? Arsenal, so yeah. Finsbury, yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, Arsenal's my favorite team. Arteta. Oh, really? Yeah. Go, Arteta, so when go. you when you come to the UK, you'll have to go and watch a football game. Most def, most mm -hmm. def. I haven't actually been outside of the country. But have yeah, you not? Yeah, I will soon. Mm -hmm. <laughs> to visit your brother. Yeah, most probably. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now you're gonna love sister. London, man. You're yeah. gonna love London. <laughs> yeah. It, it really is a great place, man. Yeah, shout out, shout mm -hmm. out. Which other country have you been to? So, uh, for me, I haven't even done that much travelling, to be honest with you. Like, mm. I've just really stuck in London. But um, I've been to I've been to France a few times when I was younger. Mm. Um, and last year, I think it was probably, like, 
Yeah, I, it was my first time like on a plane mm. since I, I can remember, yeah, yeah. <laughs> since I'm old enough to remember it. And yeah. that was to Spain, <laughs> oh, okay. to Barcelona with my friends. And then I've actually been to Russia as well. Oh, dope, dope. <laughs> yeah, so that, those, are, those are the countries that I've been to. Um, but like while I've been an adult, Mm. It's really just been Spain, <laughs> yeah. like a few days in Spain, but that's it. But so coming here, it was quite a big like. I'm not used to flying or anything like that, so it was quite a big. Oof. <laughs> yeah, would you live here though in SA? Hundred percent. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, man. If it if it weren't for my family back home, I'd probably yeah. just give up. I'd move here. <laughs> yeah. Plus, like, the, it's good for your DJing and stuff. Yeah, man. Mm-hmm. Like, I like I feel like my career's going well over here. Mm. But um, you know, I I would happily live here. Maybe I could do half and half or something yeah, like yeah. half the year here, half the year at home because. I mean, I love this country, but I also really do love my home in London as yeah, well. Yeah. Like, I've always loved London. Like, I didn't, I wasn't born there, but I kind of basically, since I've been, I don't know, since I've been 18, I've lived there. And since oh. I've been little, I've really loved being there because I have family there. Where were you born? I was actually born in, <laughs> I was born in somewhere called Dorset. Oh, I don't which know is that. like it's on the south coast. It's full of uh, like farmers. Yeah, 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 It's in the countryside. Cause uh, yeah, I, I noticed that your accent is not as strong. Your mm-hmm. English accent. My English accent isn't strong. It it isn't that strong. Mm-hmm. Like it's not like. So what would you think of as a strong English accent, like a London accent? It would be like a mm-hmm. bit stronger than yours, mm-hmm. cause yours is like. Cause the thing, know. the thing with English accents is there's lots. Like you can literally, you can be in one place and yeah. you can drive for two hours and everyone speaks completely differently. They've yeah, got a completely yeah. different accent. Oh, um, okay. So like there's kind of like levels to, there's different kinds of British accents. So my my accent is from the South. Oh, and okay. they say that people from the South, we talk posh. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so okay. yeah. Um, but then when I go back to, when I go back to my family, Mm. in the south from from london when i visit them mm. <laughs> they say that i sound like i've got a london accent so i don't know which one it is <laughs> yeah <I'm> confused <laughs> yeah okay because like I, i've seen like a lot of people from the u.s like mm-hmm. uh there's uh most if you know him is a rapper yeah yeah uh he moved here and he did stayed. he really he, he didn't like move mm-hmm. like he came here to visit but then he stayed longer then his visa, you mm-hmm. know, and then he got chased out because like his visa expired. Oh really? Yeah, he got lost in the sauce. <laughs> <laughs> also, there's this other guy, Manson Main. He's a YouTuber. Manson Main. Yeah, yeah. No, I don't think I've heard of him he, or her. He is. It's a guy. He yeah. lived here for like two years, I think. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, oh, South Africa must be the place to be because like everybody really enjoys. Being yeah, there. yeah. I feel like from the outside, like the. <laughs> South Africa, what well, South Africa does the best is vibes. Yeah, yeah. South Africa, like, since I got here, it's just been 100% pure vibes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Doesn't yeah. matter if it's a Monday or <laughs> Monday morning or... Um, Monday. F- <laughs> yeah, because yeah, um, I feel like in the UK, um, it's, it's really not like that. Like, Monday to... Thursday, people are working. There's yeah. not really any parties going on like that. Mm. Um, but here, I was so surprised because I think it was um, it was like the second booking I had when I was down here, mm. and it was on a Tuesday. And I thought, huh, interesting, because yeah, yeah. <laughs> you never get you. I don't. You'd rarely get a club night on a Tuesday mm. in the UK. Um, and, and yeah, I, was, I, I came to the club. There. Yeah. And it was popping. Yeah. It was, I thought, okay, a Tuesday is going to be like a chill vibe. People are, you know, it's during the week. Yeah. But the place was popping like it was a Friday night. It yeah. was. <laughs> yeah, I think like people in SA, they love like, you know, vibes, you know. Like, <laughs> <laughs> they really do. They really do. I think it might be because of, uh, I think maybe the apartheid and all mm-hmm. that. I don't know. But like people just like forgetting about their problems and going out having mm-hmm. fun in, you know, uh, a party environment type mm-hmm. stuff. Yeah. Not dwelling. Yeah. And their problems. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But okay. Um, yeah. When are you going back to the UK? For? So I'm going back on fifteenth of August. Okay. 
part of me like part of me would like to stay for longer. Yeah. yeah. But I miss my mum. <laughs> <laughs> and not your dad. <laughs> I miss my mum and my dad. <laughs> I did that part. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I miss my mum and my dad. So I'll probably okay. be back on the 15th of August. <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, one question that we always ask everyone that comes on here is, um, what would you do if you only have had 24 hours left to live? Oh, I'm going to need to think about that one for a moment. What would I do? I think if I only had 24 hours left to live, I would go to my, my friend's house and have a... We have something on a Tuesday night. We have a chewy Tuesday. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we just all cook food together. It would be a chill motive, oh. to be honest with you. Because yeah. um, basically, uh, I'm at the club a lot. Do you know what I mean? I'm partying a lot. Yeah. So I think for me, if I had 24 hours left to live, I would see my friend's. Yeah. Just relax. <laughs> no, no, no. Is it? No, I, I'm sure there's something better. Could I do anything? Are the possibilities endless? Uh, yeah, anything, mm. anything. But like, obviously, it's, do I have a budget for this? Nah, let's say like you only have it like now, like. This so is right, I'm sitting here. Yeah. And then um, I get a notification on my phone saying yeah. <laughs> that I've only got 24 hours left to live. Yeah, on some Black Mirror. Have you watched Black Mirror? I, oh, oh, God, yeah. I've just watched a new season. Eesh. Eesh. <laughs> Episode two. <laughs> that one, uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, but yeah, on some Black Mirror shit, I get yeah. a notification. You've only got 24 hours left to live. Mm. I think what I would actually do, to be honest with you, is I would... Uh, would I take an Uber? Well, yeah, I would probably just uh, GTA style, get myself a car, I can't even drive, and then just <laughs> drive off into the bush. Yeah. I think, go into the nature, um, go to somewhere like God's window and just die, to be honest, yeah. go into nature. Because yeah. I'm very like, I, I'm a very like, I like to be around nature. You're spiritual. Yeah, I'm, I'm spiritual in a very vague sense. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like I'm yeah. not... Um, I don't follow one particular belief system mm. or religion per se, but like I kind of, I just, I feel, we, how can we know? Like we don't know. Do you we know what I mean? Yeah. Um, well, I don't know. Mm. I can't speak for other people. Um, so I just kind of, I feel what I feel, mm -hmm. you know, and I don't like to try and label it. Yeah. <laughs> and I think the spirits would tell me to just drive into the bush yeah. <laughs> if I had 24 hours left to live. Okay. Yeah, that's dope. That's dope. Mm -hmm. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, do the do the girls always throw yourselves at you like the one who said you're gonna get married? Huh? <laughs> do do the girls always throw yourselves themselves at you like the <laughs> one who said you're gonna get married? Oh, do you know what? I'm actually quite a shy person when it comes to girls. Um, yeah, yeah. but since coming here, I feel like I've got like I've got a lot of fans. <laughs> yeah, shout out, shout yeah. Out. Um, but um. Yeah, I'm just kind of like I'm quite shy, like um, like I appreciate it, but also like sometimes the attention is a bit like oh. it's too much. <laughs> yeah, I'm not you like I'm. I'm definitely an extroverted person, but I also have that streak of me that's introverted. Yeah, as well. yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah, I can see mm -hmm. that. Uh, okay, thank you for for coming, man, all the way to see South Africa first of all, you know, and. Thank you for coming here to the Lucent Podcast, you know. Yeah, oh, well, did they teach you that? Teach me what? <laughs> that, oh, do you... Wait, so I've, I've got this one handshake, yeah, with my... So it's it's a secret handshake, oh, there, so I okay. can't actually okay. show you. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> but yeah, I've been kind of... I've just been freestyling it, to yeah. be honest, and sometimes people laugh at me. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Right, yeah. Right, right. No, but thank you for coming. Man. Thank really you, yeah. It's really been it. interesting to talk to you and about our kind of experiences, you as someone who lives here and me as someone yeah. who's visiting. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah, thank you so much for having me on your podcast. Shout out my team. Shout out all my friends back in London. Shout out Matt Blackman and Remy. Uh, yeah. Who else? Shout out Cookie, my sister. She's got a song out. <laughs> Shout out. What, what song? I'm not piano. It's, called, uh, it's, it's actually trap. It's hip hop. Uh, oh. It's called Too Much Money. Out oh. on all streaming platforms. Oh, oh, oh. It's oh. a banger. Shout out to her. Mm -hmm. Shout out. Yeah. Um, is that it? Are is that, you, what, is that anyone? Are you like a song? Your song? Or? Yeah, so, so stay tuned for my EP, which is going to be coming up sometime over the next few months. It's going to be called London to Victoria. 
So oh. keep your eyes peeled for that one. Dope, 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 dope. <laughs> Okay. Mm-hmm. Shout out, guys. Uh, thank you for watching, man. Never on us. It's international, baby. In it, jeez. In it, in it mate. <laughs> in it, mate. <laughs> yeah, man. Uh, please okay. like, subscribe, share, okay. comment, guys. Shoot. Please. I saw y'all commented on the Lerato Kanyaku one. Uh, and okay. she also commented. Shout out to Lerato. Thank you guys for watching. Peace out. Fuck it to you. We out it. Mucho fresh, yo tengo que chipear por Mandela. Un ángel pela, tanco, saben que ni rives no me sabe. En el sofá no guardo, en el lindo, un celoso, saben a chance, en tu anega, en el sena plan, en el sena mes, en el cual es chile la pel. Mucho fresh, yo tengo que chipear por Mandela. Un ángel pela, tanco, saben que ni rives no me sabe. En el sofá no guardo, en el lindo, un celoso, saben a chance, en tu anega. Ah, let's get a plan, let's get a plan, let's get a plan.